Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Stephen Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. Today, we'll be discussing an incredibly hot topic in medical news. Monkeypox outbreak. Monkeypox. 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 What the heck is monkeypox and do we actually need to worry about this? That's right, monkeypox. And we'll talk about whether or not we actually do need to worry about this. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. So what is monkeypox? Monkeypox is a double-stranded DNA virus. It is a zoonotic infection, meaning it is a virus that can travel back and forth between animals and humans. A brief history. Monkeypox was discovered in monkeys in the 1950s in Denmark. However, it is unlikely that the virus originated in monkeys, but instead originated in rodents, making the whole monkeypox name kind of a misnomer. The first case of monkeypox in humans was identified in 1970 and a nine-month-old boy in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The first major outbreak outside of Africa occurred in the United States in 2003 and was linked to, believe it or not, the illegal trade of pet prairie dogs. Stopping this practice helped to keep the outbreak at bay. Currently, we're experiencing a surge in monkeypox cases outside of endemic areas, which started in May of this year. The WHO classified this outbreak as a global health emergency in July. At the time of recording, August 17th, the CDC reports over 39,000 cases of monkeypox, the vast majority of which occurring in non-endemic areas, and over 13,000 of which occurring in the United States, with over 2,500 occurring in New York State alone. Monkeypox symptoms usually start within three weeks of first exposure. Some patients have flu-like symptoms that present one to four days before the characteristic rash. Some patients have symptoms after the presentation of the rash, and some patients only have the rash. According to the WHO, the rash affects the face in 95% of cases, the palms of the hands and soles of the feet in 75% of cases, which is a relatively uncommon area for rashes to form, and oral mucous membranes in 70% of cases. Of interest, the conjunctiva or tissue surrounding the eye on the eyelids are affected in 20% of cases and can include the cornea, which may lead to blindness. Other symptoms outside of the rash include fever, chills, swollen lymph nodes, exhaustion, muscle aches, headaches, and the aforementioned flu-like respiratory symptoms. Monkeypox is transmitted from one person to another by close contact with lesions, bodily fluids, respiratory droplets, and contaminated materials such as bedding or towels. Most of the current cases are linked to men who have sex with men, but I need to emphasize that this is not a sexually transmitted infection, though close contact and bodily fluid exchange do leave a person at risk. And it is by no means exclusive to men who have sex with men. Diseases do not discriminate. Monkeypox can be spread from the time symptoms start until the rash has healed, all the scabs have fallen off, and a fresh layer of skin is formed, which can take two to four weeks. A monkeypox diagnosis is obtained through performing a swab on a vesicle or a scab and sending it for PCR. Fortunately, the fatality rate for monkeypox is very low, at three to six percent. In addition, there is an experimental drug, tecoviramat, or T-pox, which is helpful in reducing the symptoms of monkeypox. Currently, T-pox is only approved as a medication for smallpox, but is investigational for monkeypox and is proving to be effective, though not necessarily easy to get under current expanded access provisions. In terms of prevention, there are effective vaccines. The smallpox vaccine is 85% effective against monkeypox, and a monkeypox-specific vaccine was developed in 2019. When monkeypox first entered the public consciousness, my health system was ahead of the game and began supplying evidence-based information to the clinicians within it. The first email detailed that oral signs and symptoms were often the first manifestation, but because monkeypox was so rare in the developed world where textbooks tend to be written, I had no clue what these lesions looked like. 
I even scoured Google and the old tropical diseases textbooks from the 1970s and 1980s that my bosses kept. I looked for monkeypox and its close cousin smallpox and found no information on the oral lesions. Fortunately, earlier this month, a group out of Columbia University published two confirmed cases with oral manifestations. The first case they described was a 38-year-old man with tender lesions of the anterior tongue. The patient endorsed a fever and fatigue. These lesions did not respond to valacyclovir. A swab was performed on the oral lesions for PCR evaluation and was positive for monkeypox. The patient then developed skin lesions on his arms, legs, and torso. The second case is a 30-year-old man presenting with painful lesions on his anterior tongue and three days of fever, sore throat, and neck soreness. The patient has a history of HIV with a reportedly undetectable viral load, syphilis, and a history of multiple male sexual partners in recent history. Shortly after the oral presentation, the patient developed skin lesions on his groin region, finger, back, neck, and shoulders, which were swabbed and proven to be monkeypox. These are the first two cases that I've come across in the literature of oral lesions of monkeypox. I am incredibly grateful to my colleagues for publishing their cases and recommend you check out their paper, which I've linked in the bio. I will note that even though both of these cases occurred on the anterior tongue, I've seen some probable cases that have arisen on the gingiva. I'm certain that more information on this condition and its oral manifestations will continue to become available. In addition to the article that I referenced, I've also linked the CDC and WHO monkeypox resource websites below in the description. I recommend staying up to date on the latest guidelines and recommendations. While monkeypox is not a novel or new virus like COVID-19 was, and we know a lot about it and have treatments and a vaccine for it, it still is a public health threat, and we should pay attention to any major developments in preventing its spread, including proper diagnosis. That concludes our monkeypox introduction. Be sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the hot button oral health topics. Thanks again for watching, and be well.